Hey everybody and welcome back to the most entertaining 10 minutes of your day. I am your favorite Dungeon Master, DM Andy, and today I'm going to build a throne. Every king, every villain, and every diva selling a TV show on cable needs a throne. So I'm going to go through my bag of woodies and bits, and I'm going to pull out all these little Jenga blocks I have. They come from different size of Jenga games, but you can find them all over the place. Dollar Tree, Walmart, just everywhere. I'm going to take the two larger Jenga blocks, and I'm going to glue them together side by side, and they're going to act as the back of the throne. These raw wooden blocks really drink up this white glue, so it works really well on these wooden projects. Now I'm going to glue two of the smaller Jenga blocks together, just like I glued the taller ones together. This is going to be the seat of the throne. And now I'm going to make an attempt to attach the seat to the back of the throne, but I'm going to dump my glue out on the table without paying attention while I'm looking for a paintbrush. But fear not, being the conservative and experienced crafter that I am in the gaming world, I'm just going to use my table as my paint pot. Attach the seat to the back of the chairs, and then we'll get started on the arms. Rub some glue down the base all the way down to the back of the throne, then place one of the Jenga blocks flush with the back of the throne. They're just long enough that they give a tiny lip on the front of the chair, making it really look like a throne. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and let that glue dry. After that's had about 30 minutes to set up, I found an oval shaped woodsy that I'm going to use on the back of the chair just to give it a little more character. And now it's off to my bits and bobs bin. I'm going to dig through one of my scrap buckets to try to find some pieces to use as legs, uh, decorations, and any other thing I can to make this look like a throne. I grabbed some cereal box cardboard, cut it down to use it for the seat to help hide the seam of the Jenga blocks. I'm going to slap on some white glue and then stick that down on the seat. Now I'm going to flip the throne over and I'm going to cut down a piece that's almost the exact same size as the entire bottom. I'm just going to glue this on with some white glue, but I'm doing it to reinforce the model itself so the throne will last longer when you're playing with it. And then I'm going to make one more piece, but this time this piece is going to go on the top of the throne. You can use cardstock pieces like this to decorate the entire chair. You can make it look more dwarven or more elven, just anything you can think of. Spread on some white glue, center that small cardboard piece on the top, and then we're ready to base coat this thing. I'm going to take it outside and give it a black base coat before I put the legs or any of the jewel pieces on it. Now that we've got this guy as dark as the Black Knight's throne, time to paint it. I'm going to take some dark gray paint and a kitchen sponge, and I'm just going to sponge on some paint. I'm going to try to avoid the seat cushion, because I'm going to paint it a different color. Sponge painting your terrain pieces like this is pretty easy. It looks really good, too. The only thing you got to try to remember is don't use too much paint. If you want that sponge texture to show through, you want to dab some of the paint off each time you pick up more. Now switch to a lighter shade of gray and hit all the edges and corners. Try to put on a little less paint this time and give the model some depth. Now I'm going to take an old paintbrush and some dark red paint and I'm going to do my best to dry brush the seat cushion. Just try not to use very much paint here. I decided I wasn't happy with the way the back of the chair looked, so I got my dark gray paint out and just sponged a little on. And now that the throne is dry, it's time to glue on the legs. I just used some regular super glue and glued on some small metal beads that I got from a crafting store. You can use any kind of bead you want here. I've used those small plastic ones before and even wooden ones. I used metal ones here because this one's for a throne room where it's more of an undermountain dwarven kind of throne. And now I'm going to channel my inner Wylock and start bedazzling this thing. 
I'm just going to glue on two small round beads to the front of the arms and one tiny head knocker jewel. Just so you know, this throne is for someone important. And that's going to do it today, guys. I hope you like the throne I made. I hope you make one too. And as always, I'm your favorite dungeon master, DM Andy, saying thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe. Find yourself in the throne room of Galfor, the dwarven king in the mine. Only the dwarves have not sit upon this throne in a hundred years. For an evil necromancer has stolen their kingdom and forced them out of the mine. Bards across many kingdoms spread rumors about the enormous fortune below the necromancer's feet. Yet no one has ever dared brave inside the mines, for even a siege army cannot lay waste to the necromancer's cult-like horde. Now, after months of questing and tons of Mountain Dew, you find yourself at the foot of the throne. What shall you do?